in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. If you're brand new to the Jimmy Rants world, where you been, number one? Just kidding. JimmyRants.com is the website if you want to know how it all gets started. We pop over to Instagram first. So go follow me there if you're not already following me on Instagram, at LivinLowCarbMan, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. You can watch live just like all these people are doing right now. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. We then put it over on YouTube, so go look up Jimmy Rants as a keyword search on YouTube or Google, and you will find the past episodes. And then finally, the best of the best moments of this here show are in podcast form over on Apple Podcasts, the Jimmy Rants Podcast. All of this, you guys, with all the links to everything I've talked about, is at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is a topic I've been thinking about quite a bit lately because I've been around for a little while and I started the Atkins diet back in 2004. And at that point in 2004, low carb Atkins was all the rage. And then the uh, demise quickly came shortly thereafter. Dr. Atkins had just died, and a lot of the products that came on the shelves that called themselves low-carb or Atkins-friendly really weren't low-carb or Atkins-friendly. So that kind of wave died down. Well, the next big wave that came into the nutritional health world was paleo. Now, paleo started, if you want to count Mark Sisson, uh, and his book, The Primal Blueprint, which came in 2009. And then Rob Wolf's book was the really big one that put paleo on the map called The Paleo Solution in 2010. So around 2009, 2010, we start this paleo movement. And the paleo uh, crowd started to build. In 2011, they did their first conference. 2012, they did the first uh, like big conference where they had a whole lot of people show up in the hundreds. And then in the years that followed, they had uh, thousands of people come to these conferences. They would have uh, paleo this, paleo that. Paleo was the buzzword when it came to nutritional health. And so it seemed in the midst of that, and I was a part of that community because keto as a community really wasn't that big yet. It's big now uh, and much bigger than paleo ever was. But paleo was the, the big boy on the block, so to speak, for a lot of years, between 2010 and I want to say maybe 2015, paleo ruled the roost. And it was a very strong community of people that were like-minded about the principles of paleo and what drew them together. Then they go to the conferences and all the connections and everything. But something happened. And I want to talk about this here today on this Jimmy Rants, that keto needs to learn the lessons. We should all learn the lessons of the paleo community. And not to say that paleo is completely gone now, but the intense excitement about paleo that was there even as few years ago as like three, four years ago, it's gone. It's gone completely now. You still have paleo books being written out there, but not nearly to the level that they were. You still have people that adhere to paleo and are all gaga goo goo about it. And again, you always have that. But what happened? What made it disappear from the consciousness other than it had been out there for a little while? That's what a lot of my paleo friends would say as well. It, it got out there and so many people were talking about it that it wasn't as popular anymore. And so I'm wondering how you prevent that from happening with keto. So right now we're in the, the, the huge wave that is keto in our modern culture. And everybody and their mama's trying to jump on the keto bandwagon. Even people that have been anti-keto. 
Uh, we'll know it. We'll, we'll know that keto has jumped the shark if Jillian Michaels comes out with a keto book. Right. So, <laughs> couldn't resist. Sorry. So, uh, so yeah. So, how do you keep keto from befalling that same fate? Now, here, here's the truth, you guys. Keto is going to eventually die down as a as a movement as a pop culture movement. It's eventually going to not be as strong in the culture as it is right now. Although I do find it interesting that every one of the major uh, nutritional health movements that have happened over the past couple of decades, you had Atkins Low Carb, you had Paleo and Primal and Whole30, Gluten-Free, Wheat-Free, and now Keto, all of them predicated on lowering the amount of ca uh, carbohydrates in your diet. All of them. So what's the next movement? Carnivore? Is that the one that's going to catch on and, and, and ride the wave? Anyway, I digress. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about trying to learn from the mistakes that happened with the last major nutritional health movement, which was paleo. How can keto avoid those mistakes? I'll tell you something paleo did that was a, a huge part of their demise. They ostracized keto. So we could make the analogy that keto is to paleo as carnivore is to keto. Okay, stick with me here. So keto, I saw as a subset of paleo. So if you're eating a paleo diet, keto is not explicitly, or paleo is not explicitly a ketogenic diet, but if you wanted to eat keto within the paleo template, it fit. And yet, there were people that ostracized the ketogenic diet. There was a whole talk at one of the big paleo conferences, and it was just three years ago that this happened, you guys. Big talk. The dangers of a ketogenic diet. So one of the leaders in the paleo world made this big proclamation all about how horrible the ketogenic diet is and how nobody should be doing that diet and it is the worst possible diet you could ever go on because you will die. Okay, and a lot of that person's uh, arguments and the research that that person cited was based on the epilepsy uh, uh, research from the the 20s of very, very, very sick children doing a very, very strange version of the ketogenic diet, not what you and I would consider keto. But that got put out there. And she was roundly mocked for mocking the ketogenic diet. But she stuck to her guns and people started rallying around her in that world. So they ostracized a lot of us that did keto. I have not been back to that paleo conference since that happened. Especially when I put in for a talk to respond to that, and I was in the audience at that talk that she gave, I put in a, a, a response talk I wanted to do the very next year. Nope. They turned me down. And I'm going, all right. If we're going to have a discussion in this community, we should be open. But they didn't. And I just learned last year, they had a whole keto focus at that same conference that just three years ago, they dissed the ketogenic diet. So anyway, back to the analogy. Now, keto rules the roost. And one of the subsets of keto is carnivore. And so I don't think we as the keto community need to ostracize people that choose to do kind of a carnivorous styled ketogenic approach because you can very much stay in ketosis and very much get all the benefits of the ketogenic approach by eating a mostly meat-based, animal food-based diet. So that's one thing that I can see could be a mistake that the paleo world did that we can avoid. We need to embrace those people who perhaps choose to do carnivore. Now, obviously, I'm currently testing that for myself and having great results from it. So I have a little bit of a personal connection to this one. And I would even say we need to be very, very wary of all these companies that are coming on board and slapping keto and everything. We saw that with paleo. We saw that with the Atkins low carb diet, but we saw it with paleo too. They started putting little caveman people on all the packaging and paleo friendly. And you'd read the back of it and it's like sugar, 
white flour grains. And I'm going, how is this paleo? We need to be careful of that with keto as well. I just saw a company, I had an endocrinologist write me and he said, a lot of patients are coming in telling me about this company. I'm not going to tell you the name of it. Uh, and so he sent me the website to the company and I'm looking at it. They claim that they are ketogenic friendly, but then you get into it hot and heavy and look at what they're, what they're pitching. They're pitching a low carb, no fat, high protein products. How is that ketogenic in any shape, form, or fashion? And yet they're using keto as a buzzword for promoting their product. We've got to be savvy about it, you guys. We've got to be very wise consumers. If you don't hear me talking about it, there's good reason for that, nine times out of 10. Sometimes there's things that slip that I don't know about that then are pretty decent. But a lot of these companies, they're putting out stuff. I mean, again, we saw it in the paleo world, had little caveman people on it, had little, uh, you know, they called it primal something, they called it paleo something or paleo friendly and they were anything but. And so we're seeing the same thing in, in keto. With keto, stick with the brands you kind of know. So like uh, I just posted on social media about the F-bomb people uh, getting into not just uh, um, Vitamin Shop and GNC, but they just got into CVS stores all across America. They are a legit company that started from humble beginnings and are doing things the right way. Not everybody's that way. And I knew when SlimFast came on board and had their version of keto this, keto that, I was like, nope, don't buy that crap, guys. It could be the most legitimate thing in the world. Don't support those companies that don't have their heart with the mission of what keto is. That's a big mistake that I saw happen in the paleo world, that if we're not careful in the keto world, is going to happen again to us that will lead to a quicker demise. I also think in the publishing world, you've got to be careful about the books that have the word keto or ketogenic in the title. Not everything that you see as a book or a resource out there that says keto or ketogenic in the title is keto. Can I be blunt about that? I'll tell you what happened um, when I wrote my book, Keto Clarity. Uh, it's been five years ago that that book came out. And it was within about a year after it came out and it was pretty successful. Um, I had people that would start writing books that they would put Keto Clarity in the title. And one of them, I bought, I bought it just so I could see what was on the inside. And it was the most horrible recipes. They used white flour and sugar and all this stuff. And I'm going, all they're doing is piggybacking on the movement, piggybacking on the success that my book had, and yet people will buy that. Oh, this is keto, and then they don't get results, and they say, oh, that keto didn't work. So we've got to be very, very careful, you guys, that we don't fall into that trap. And we saw this with the paleo world. So if you're just joining us, I've been around a very long time, and so I've been able to see three distinctive trends now. When I first started, it was the low-carb trend, the Atkins diet in the early 2000s. I started in 2004. It was just starting to be really hot that year. And by 2005, six is when it started to wane. So I saw all that happening. Then I saw Paleo come on board and they had this huge surge in popularity and all these products and everything started coming out and the saturation of the market with Paleo. And then it started to dwindle. So I'm wondering and thinking out loud with you guys here today, how do we as the keto community learn from those mistakes of the Paleo community because keto will not be hot forever. But how do we keep this wave going a little longer than those did? Because I think there's specific things that we could do as a community to make it work. But also in the meantime, making sure that the people get that come into uh, keto get funneled to the right information. Because there's going to be a whole lot of rabbit holes they can go down. Um, if they come into keto and don't have the education about where the good information is, what the good products are, what the good books are, it's a very slippery slope into getting into danger zone of people saying, well, I tried that keto because they did this version of keto that doesn't look anything like what you and I might think is a good, well-formulated ketogenic approach. 
All right, so the bottom line here is let's learn from those mistakes that paleo made. And if you were around during the paleo world and you kind of saw things that happen, uh, tell me some thoughts that you have about how keto can avoid some of those same mistakes of paleo. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here, you guys. It's always a pleasure to do these Jimmy rants for you. Keto Neogenesis, Beth says uh, it possibly died down because people kept tweaking it, making it not paleo at all. And I'm seeing that already happen, uh, Beth, with keto, like I talked about in my earlier Jimmy rants about how people are doing the if it fits your macros, and that's not at all uh, how you should do keto. And so you're right. They probably did. I'll tell you what they did too, as they started, yeah, they moved the goalposts. When they first started, paleo was a pretty darn low carb, high fat diet. But then they're like, some people were like, well, you need to add in these things called resistant starches and you need to add in honey to your recipes because honey's a natural sugar. So that doesn't really harm you or maple syrup. That's a natural sugar. So that's no problem. And then they, they developed this term that they allowed to get a foothold in the, in their community called safe starches. So they said, Oh, eat all the white potatoes, all the white rice, all of that. It's not harmful to you. It's a safe starch. So they started coming up with this terminology that moved the goalpost. And I get it if people were thriving doing that. But the problem was they made it a one size fits all that everybody should be doing those things. And it ticked off those of us that ate low carb keto because we knew white rice and white potatoes were no bueno for us. And we knew resistant starch was still starch. It was no bueno for us. And so that was a big part of how the goalpost shifted from when they started towards uh, till towards the end. Uh, similar to if it fits your macros, exactly. Katie Caddick said the world would split into vegans and carnivore. Uh, talk about sharing the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's, that would be an interesting one. Jesse says, this is starting to happen. Some people who are now doing carnivore are criticizing keto. Stop it. We're bio-individual. Keto is still good, guys. Yeah, I didn't even think about it from that perspective that, yes, some of the carnivore people, and can I, can I be honest about the zero carbers? I have not, uh, or I've been noticing them since I first started blogging, and that was way back in 2005. So the zero carb people have always been out there. And I had several of the zero carb people at that time say, well, just eat all meat and, and all your woes go away. And, but it was kind of the tone by which they were communicating the information. And so I never really embraced that because it was the people that were representing it that didn't really explain it very well or didn't really make the case to me without sounding like pretentious buttholes. Let's just be honest. So the people behind the messages have to be kind and compassionate and encouraging because at the end of the day, that's what people want to connect to. You can have all the best information in the world, but if it's not presented in a good way, it won't be heard. It won't be embraced. Uh, and you're right. So carnivore people should not be criticizing keto. We're, we're the ones that have the message that's getting all the attention right now. So if anything, carnivore people should be embracing the keto people. Now, the funniest thing to me are all the paleo people who now suddenly are popping up as keto experts. Where were you people when I wrote Keto Clarity and people were criticizing keto? You weren't keto experts then. And now, because keto is ruling the roost in the mainstream, you want to write a keto book? Again, not to say that some of those people aren't legitimately keto or don't legitimately have information about keto, but I've seen a lot of those books. And most of those books, they say keto is a hack. You do it for a short period of time. And once you get your body to where it needs to be with keto, then you go to our eating plan, which is more on the paleo-ish side of things. That ain't keto. Using keto as a as a reset or or to start things anew again or to kickstart your body into fat burning, I suppose is a way to use keto. But if keto is good, why would you stop it? 
Why would you only use it as a hack, so to speak? Why wouldn't you stay keto over the long term? So that's some of my concerns with some of the paleo people now trying to trying to be keto and have books about it. They're both ancestral diets, says Ange. Yeah, for sure they are. Uh, AK Bonbons and that uh, said that's what upset me. Newbies um, fall for all those products. They really do, because all it has to do is say K E T O on the front packaging, and they'll use it as a marketing term. And it's not always K-E-T-O. It's sometimes N-O-P-E. That's what we should be putting on the package. Nancy, Virginia Beach, it's so important that those of us who have been doing this for a while help point the people that are newbies to the good resources because there's so much misinformation out there. If there's a complaint that I get from people is, I don't know who to believe. I read one website and it says, that I should cycle carbs in and out. I read another website that says I should stay, stay strict keto all the time. I just don't know what to believe. And so I'm like, at that point, you figure out what works for you and find those people that are your people and find those people that you connect with and listen to what they have to say because you can get overwhelmed by all of the information that is put out there. And sometimes not naming names, but sometimes there's people that put things out there that are totally whacked just to try to stir the pot. So just be aware of that as well, you guys. Not everybody is in this for the right reasons and good reasons, and you just have to be aware of that and uh, put on your BS meter really strong. Jesse says, I got a couple of recipe books that have canola oil and panko and honey, so be careful out there. Know your basics, always. You can't rely on it just because it says keto on the front cover. You can't rely that it's totally legit. I'll make you a promise. If I write a book, it's legit going to have keto recipes in there that you can feel good about. Because I wouldn't put my name on a book unless it did. And there's several other people out there. The Maria Emmerichs of the world. Suzanne Ryan, Keto Karma. Her books are all amazing. I'm going to insult a bunch of my friends because I'm not naming all their names. But you know who the good people are. Stick with those. If you see a book and you've never heard of this author before, put up your little spidey senses and say, okay, maybe, maybe there's a reason I haven't heard of these people before. Hello, Dory. Thanks for being here. Uh, Kugrad89, right? Keto is a buzzword right now. Marketing is taking over and creating the misinformation, which is why it's in incumbent upon those of us that do have the good information that have done this a while to guide those people that are coming into this world and this community, guide them to the things that are good from the things that are not so good. So that's our role, you guys. Keep sharing and keep living a true keto lifestyle, not just live a keto diet, says Joshua. See, Joshua, you've, you've learned. You've learned well. Uh, Ann says, I don't understand why people that want to have higher carbs just do paleo instead of dirty, lazy, dirty keto or lazy keto. I don't understand why people that want to have higher carbs. Oh, I think what you're asking is why, why don't they do just a higher carb paleo? And some people could probably do okay with a higher carb paleo or even that quote unquote dirty, lazy keto, which I abhor, um, don't put keto attached to it because that's not really a well-formulated keto, but I digress. Um, and still do well with that because their carb tolerance level is higher. But for people with insulin resistance, you can't have a higher carb. You've got to stick with the plan. And, and, and that's uh, the demise that a lot of people have. I personally discuss with people keto, carnivore, paleo, primal, whole 30, clean, clean, clean. I respect people's choice. My preference is keto, says Jesse. And I, and I think it's okay to present all the options to people because all the ones you named and more are all really, really good plans. But what we're talking about here today is what was, what was it that led to the demise of paleo as a popular diet trend? And I think it was their lack of inclusion of things that would have fit within the template of paleo, which keto was fitting quite well within the template of what they do. But then it was ostracized while everything else was glorified in paleo. And I'm seeing now 
that there's some people in keto they're kind of ostracizing carnivore and lest we're careful you guys carnivore could possibly become the next big trend because keto shunned it so don't do that let's don't shun it i think if we're stronger together if all of us in the paleo primal keto carnivore clean real food you know all these movements got together how strong would we be? Now, right now, everybody's talking keto, 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 but what if we all rallied around this concept of real whole food being the basis of our diet? You even throw in the vegans when you do that. And how much of a huge movement would that be if people just simply embraced real whole foods with a spectrum of veganish whole food all the way to carnivore? Now, that to me is a movement that would have legs that wouldn't go anywhere for many years to come. Thank you for the great information. Thank you, Rocky. I've never heard of safe starches. Well, you haven't missed much living, Liz, and healthy. Um, I did a whole blog post about that uh, several years ago and did a, a lot of, of talking about it. But yes, white rice and white potatoes, they considered safe to eat. Now, they were referring to the toxins that are in it compared to, say, grains and, and other things. But when you put the word safe in, in front of starch, you confuse people. And I called them out on it. And they didn't like Jimmy Moore calling them out on their precious white rice and white potatoes. But I had to keep it real for people that had blood sugar concerns. The people who would eat those things thinking they're, quote, safe not knowing that safe meant safe from toxins, but it still wasn't safe from the blood sugar and insulin response. I had to call them out on it. And and they they did not like me for very well there for a while. Uh, losing the belly to gain the bump says a lot of the problems I see is when people start making hacks to a food that is not low carb. Cookies, brownies, ice cream, imitation foods are a slippery slope. And I can see them for special occasions. I can see them as a temporary thing if you're just starting to transition from the crappy garbage version to this. But you're right. If you're eating them on the regular, um, then maybe you need to decide to back away from those things. And that can, if people think that that's keto, having the low carb keto version of every junk food known to mankind, and people think that's keto, that is a huge slippery slope. I agree with you. Don't be the keto elitist to people who do not choose to do what we do. Just support clean and real nutrition. I'm right there with you, Jesse. And I think that's where that's where paleo got it wrong. They made fun of keto. Not everybody. But once that talk was made and people kind of were like, yeah, rallying around that person that gave that anti-keto talk, that was the beginning of the end for, for paleo. One of our biggest fears is getting swayed off track by not listening to the right people. Keto fasting, Montana living, that's why you listen to people like me and listen to Dr. Ken Berry, all these other people that are good at giving out really good information. Stick with them. Stick with what you hear and what, what passes your BS meter. I mean, I'm not saying that everything I say out of my mouth is 100% gospel truth. If you don't believe something that I say, that's cool. Go look it up. Go learn more. That's the bottom line here. Be a savvy, wise consumer of the information. And if something doesn't sound right, go look it up. Go study it. Go learn more. And in the end, you make the decision that's right for you. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Labels aside, you have to do what works best for your body and your well-being. For sure. And people like labels because they like saying, well, I did well because of. And so I get that. But it does become this kind of tribalism if we're not careful either. And I saw this a lot in the paleo community. So much tribalism towards that term, paleo. And then some were like ancestral. So and, and so they would they would rally around whatever that term was that they felt was describing who and what they were. And again, nothing wrong with that. But I even did a previous Jimmy rants about we've got to be careful about so associating with the word keto that we realize that that's not who we are. It's what we do to get healthy, but it's not who we are. And I saw in paleo, paleo became who who people were. And, and that was 
part of what uh, led to their undo undoing as well. Ba, 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 ba. And Janaski says, however, it's often uh, we come across as keto elite when we try to educate newcomers. And that's the tricky balance. How do you describe it to people that are new without sounding like that? Well, um, let me tell you all about keto. And it's very simple. And if you don't get it, you're just stupid. Yeah. I see people out there to do that. Please don't be that person. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So, the bottom line in this Jimmy Ranch, you guys, is we as the keto community need to learn from the mistakes that I've seen happening in the paleo community because it was just three years ago they were the biggest movement in the entire nutritional health world. And so they were the biggest thing. And now keto is 10 times bigger than paleo ever was. So what's going to keep us from having the same demise? What's going to keep us from by the end of 2019 when keto, you'll see keto everything. You'll probably hear on television shows, uh, characters on TV shows talking about keto. It's going to happen, guys. You watch. But what happens after that? 2020? 2021? Is it going to wane? Is it going to drop and fall off the, the planet? Obviously, people like us will keep doing it and we'll keep talking about it. But as a movement, will it just go crash and burn? And what can we do now that will stave off some of that crashing and burning that we learn the lessons from the paleo world? Go do a Google search, you guys, of paleo and some of the things that, that were out there just a few years ago and how that quickly led to their demise. I don't want to see the same thing happen to keto. If keto, if we hold true to the keto message as prescribed, there's no reason why this couldn't last three, four, five more years where people are really interested in it. And of course, there'll be subsets like the carnivore movement and other things. But at the end of the day, people are trying to get healthy, lose weight. We got to focus on the health markers of keto as well and not just let it be a weight loss thing. Weight loss is a great side effect, but it's not necessarily the goal of going keto. Lately, whenever you do a rant, it sinks with the things I've been pondering. Thank you for your voice. Thank you, Jesse. And I think a lot about these things, you guys. I hope you gather that from these Jimmy rants. If you're regular watchers and uh, listeners to my show, you know, I, I try to think deeper than just, mm, I wonder what that macronutrient ratio is. I, I, don't, I don't do a lot of those kind of ones because that's overdone. What I don't hear talked about is kind of philosophical type things like what I'm talking about here today. So thank you for that, Jesse. So guys, that is it for this Jimmy Ranch. JimmyRants.com is the website. And if you're brand new to the show, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hop on over to JimmyRants.com. You'll see that we start off on Instagram Live. So go follow me on Instagram and you can engage live in all the content just like these people did here today. So I'm at Living Low Carb Man on Instagram, L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. And then you can watch live. If you missed the live, you can watch the replay with all the comments that come in uh, on Instagram for up to 24 hours. But then we pop it over to YouTube. The comments disappear on your screen on YouTube, but you get all of the uh, interaction that I have uh, with the people. So go follow that on YouTube. And then finally, if you like to listen to content, we do have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best moments of this here show. JimmyRants.com is the website. So until next time, we'll see you then.